Welcome back. In a previous video, we looked at how to go into an existing event and make changes. So we basically looked at this tool set here. And um, within that video, we looked at how to access the edit menu, but we didn't go into all the details or all the options that were available when you do edit. So let's click on that and um, we'll come back and look at some of them now, some of the basic ones. Um, first thing is you can edit the date. So right now this is set for the 29th to the 31st, but I could just come in and make it all the way to the 2nd. So now I'm going to have dinner with Joe on the 29th to 30th all the way through to the 2nd. If we say save, it adjusts here. Next thing we can do is we can pick a time. So I can um, uncheck this all day and you'll see the time options come up. So I'm going to make this a very uh, consistent dinner. I'm going to say it starts at 5 o'clock and uh, it's defaulting to 5.30 but these are going to be business dinners where we're doing a lot of work. So there's a two hour dinner or two and a half hour, 5 to 7.30 and if I save that you can see that the start time for the event is now included in the entry. Now note that even though there's a time associated with it, it didn't go to this bulleted format. It, it, it stayed with this big block of color. And the reason for that is that this occurs over multiple days. So if I go back in and edit this event and say, um, you know, I'm really, we're really not going to be meeting all of those days. Let me come back here. Uh, and just say, yeah, we're just having dinner on the 29th. So it starts on the 29th, it ends on the 29th. And I save that, you can see now it converts to this, this bullet. And these will, will go in time order. So if I had a 5 p.m., a 7 p.m., and 9 p.m., they would stack in the correct order. Um, when a time is not associated with that, it really, it really can't do that. Okay, let's look at some other features we can edit. Okay, you can add a location, and, and this is huge. I'm just going to say 12 Main Street. Uh, let's just pick one that pops up here. And if I save this, now when I come in, the location is listed here, and the top line is a link. And if I click on that link, it's going to open up in Google Maps so that I could... Um, then go and get directions. So th this is a great feature, especially since um, this calendar syncs with your phone. So if you're using um, Google Calendar on your phone, you simply click on that link and all of a sudden uh, you're getting directions and it's taking to you to wherever you need to go. So very, very convenient. Okay, other things that I can edit here. I can edit my notifications. So if you look, you can get an email reminder or you can get a notification. And what a notification is, is, is one of those things that just slides up on your screen or pops up on your phone and lets you know that something's, in this case, going to happen, that there is an event coming up. And uh, you can set it as notification or, if you prefer, you can get it as an email. You can leave this one as notification. And right now it's set to 30 minutes before. So I can add an additional notification. I can say, uh, this is important, but I want an email. And I want that email one day before. Okay, so now I'm going to get both of these things. I'm going to get an email a day before, and I'm going to get a notification pop up on my device, provided that I have notifications enabled. So I do have to enable notifications for this to happen, but then a message will pop up either on my phone on, or on my computer that lets me know this is going to happen. And I can add as many of these as I want. I can add another um, notification to come up. Oh, let's say that's 30 minutes. Let's just say two hours before. And you can see that your options for notification time frames are minutes, hours, days, and weeks. Okay, so now I'm going to get three notifications, uh, or two notifications in one email, but I'm going to be reminded three separate times about this particular conference. Okay, um, here's an option for me to change this event to a different calendar. So 
uh, if I created it and I created it in the wrong space and I realized that the people who need to see it, the people I may have shared the other calendars with can't see it, I can just correct that here. I can also change the color of the bullet so I can just say, um, you know, when this appears I'd rather have it be green. Now one thing you have to know is that the people you've shared it with have their own controls for this. So it's not like I can color code it for other people on the calendar. This is only for my view. Okay, um, there's also a designation that you can change here. It's not always necessary, but if you're using a calendar in a business environment um, where a lot of people are checking on your calendar or trying to schedule meetings based on availability of other people, you can just simply set this to busy. By default, it's going to be free. And um, this is going to let somebody know that you're not available during that time. Not something I found teachers need to use too much. And then you can set that setting, the results of that, to be public or private. Okay, so whether um, everybody can see the event or whether just, just you can see it. Again, not something I found too many people need. Um, and next thing you can do is you can just add a description. So this is a way for you to add notes for yourself. So um, I'm going to say that this is a French restaurant and um, quite expensive or, or whatever it is that I want to say. I can leave myself notes over here. Um, this is nice because it includes some formatting. I could actually create a hyperlink in there if I wanted. So here let me just say uh, French restaurants Okay, let's let's say that this is um, this is the link I want. This is a Google link. It brings me some information. I could go to the um, site of the the restaurant itself. But if if I highlight that, I can simply put that link in there. And if I save that, it's a way for me to provide myself with more information. I come here, oh, now I've got my notes, they appear right here. I click on that and it opens me up to that page. So this is a great way for me to include the information that I need in an event, kind of a one-stop shop. Everything's together. I don't have to worry about emailing myself and or sharing files or doing anything like that. I can just simply link to it. Um, but even more powerfully, um, I'm providing this information for the people that I've shared this calendar with. It's going to be very, very helpful in that way. i uh, note my three reminders here have now appeared so I can see all that information here. Um, and you can also attach. So, you know, you have your basic controls, your bold, italics, underline. I can make a bulleted or numbered list, etc. But I can attach items to this. So I can go to my Google Drive, say... And I can, what have I gotten here? Let's just say, anything. This is a presentation. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to say select. I'm going to save that. And now when I come in, a link to that presentation is, is available as well. Okay, we will come back in another video and we'll look at some of these other controls. These repeat controls deserve a video of their own. Um, we've got some additional actions up here, etc. But the, these are the basic uh, pieces of information you might want to add to an event and, and how to do it.